Hey guys, Gaming Gold Gamer here, bringing you another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. Today I wanted to just talk about my thoughts on the new uh, moves and returning moves coming in uh, the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Indigo Disc DLC. So we got a lot of really good returning moves. We're going to start with the video with talking about those and how they're going to impact the metagame. And then we're going to talk about the new moves as well, what they do and my thoughts on what they're going to do as far as impacting the metagame goes as well. Um, I will leave timestamps too in the video, so if you want to just jump ahead to the new moves, if you don't really care about the returning moves, um, you can just kind of jump ahead to that part of the video. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. So taking a look here um, at the returning TMs, Pain Split's going to be one that's going to be really nice. I don't think a lot of Pokemon that like really rely on Pain Split um, that didn't have it before. Um, are going to be getting it through the TM now, but it is nice to have that as an option. There are definitely some Pokemon in the past that I've really liked using, and they have a lot of potential, but the biggest thing that holds them back is not having a healing move, and Pain Split at least gives you one good option to kind of get around that if you don't have a better, like, recovery option. And Pain Split can also be a really cool move, too, if you're doing things like, like Leech Seed and uh, have a sapping move that's going to help you out. Um, so that can be kind of nice, and if you have really low hit points as well, because it's just based on like the amount of hit points you're, you're draining from the, the opposing Pokemon, the difference. Um, so if you have like a really low hit point base stat total, um, then you're just going to be healing a lot more. Pokemon like Dusclops and Dusnor using Pain Split is going to be a lot better than a Pokemon with really high hit points like uh, Pokemon like Drifblim. So I just had a really nice move. I'm glad to see it returning as a TM. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, but it, it, it's nice to see it return at the very least. Uh, it's going to make it a lot more accessible. Psych Up's one that I think a lot of people don't ever even consider running in competitive Pokemon, but I do think it has its niche. It's kind of hard to use. Um, and I almost wish that you could steal the opposing opponent's um, healing or, or stat changes, but I guess that would be a little too overpowered. We used to have a move called Snatch that didn't really get any play, but it was kind of hilarious. I did like using it in singles where if they were going to set up, you could use Snatch to kind of steal that from them. Um, but Psychic, uh, Psych Up, sorry, just steals the opposing Pokemon stat changes. Um, and the biggest thing that I see this like being good on is like unaware pokemon like i think clefable is probably the best use of it is it can just ignore the opposing pokemon stat changes and then use psych up and then use those stat changes to benefit yourself um you can use a powerful move like stored power that's going to get boosted from all those stat changes so it's not really it's not really going to matter like what stat changes happen as long as you're, you're coming in and stealing those but i could definitely see some pokemon potentially making good use of this uh, maybe you psych up and then baton pass into a Pokemon that's going to make better use of it or baton pass into an unaware Pokemon. So very niche, but kind of fun to see it coming back. Double Edge coming back as a TM. Um, Double Edge isn't an amazing move by any stretch of the imagination, but there are a few Pokemon that are really going to benefit from this. Um, one definitely being um, Embor. So Embor has the Reckless ability, and it uh, never actually got access to Double Edge, I don't think. So now it's finally going to have access to Double Edge, again, that boosted damage. It's just going to be a nice coverage option. And they also got rid of Return um, a couple generations ago. They got rid of Return in the last couple of Pokemon games. And so not having that good physical option for Pokemon, um, at least Double Edge, most Pokemon that could have learned Return are going to be able to learn Double Edge. And it's just another good physical option if you don't worry about the recoil damage. So not, not a huge deal but it is nice to see it coming back. I am very, very happy about Endeavor coming back as a TM. There's a lot of really fun shenanigans you can do with Endeavor as a TM, and I think certain Pokemon that I wanted to have access to Endeavor um, didn't until now that it returned as a TM. Um, Endeavor, if you don't know, it returns like the uh, opposing Pokemon. It brings them down to whatever hit point you have. Um, and it's really, really handy if you have like the sturdy ability or if you have the focus sash and you're doing shenanigans. Like I like doing Trick Room or uh, Tailwind on a really weak Pokemon. Like I used to run like Ducklet with a uh, focus sash and I'd run Tailwind, so it'd bring me down to my sash. Um, and then use Endeavor and then knock me out and then my next Pokemon can come in and maybe use like a, a move that's going to power them up um, or like a Moxie um, boosted Pokemon. So like if you did that and then you brought in Krakowl, um and used Aqua Step with your Moxie ability, now you're going plus one and two stats um, and you still have that speed boost from the Tailwind. So it can be kind of a nice option there. Um, it's definitely going to be a fun one to have back in the game. 
Um, Pedal Blizzard doesn't really get a whole lot of usage, but having that grass type being kind of nice. But I think most Pokemon that get access to Pedal Blizzard are already grass types. And most times you're not going to want to lock yourself into a grass type move, especially in 3v3. It's not going to be good. Um, it just kind of restricts your options. Um, so not a very big one here. But there might be a special attacker or two that appreciates this. Um, so it is just nice to see it back here. Uh, that's a new one we'll talk about in just a second here. I actually didn't know Whirlpool wasn't a TM yet. A few Pokemon already got access to, to Whirlpool, like the, the most important ones. Um, you have like a lot of like Parishon Whirlpool Pokemon. Um, now we have Dugon and Lapras returning. Um, so it's nice to see that this actually is returning back as a TM. We've definitely seen Pokemon like Dragonite too make really good advantage of like Fire Spin and other trapping moves, Pokemon using other trapping moves. Uh, Frost Moth was really good with Inf Infestation, just being able to trap special attackers. So I definitely think there are going to be some Pokemon that are going to find some good usage with being able to trap Pokemon with the Whirlpool and then also getting some of that chip damage. Uh, muddy Water is not great accuracy, so I would always run Surf over Muddy Water. I don't think there's really a great argument for running Muddy Water, uh, unless you really want to run that gamble. Um, just to, Does it lower their speed or their accuracy? I actually can't remember. Let's look it up really quick. Muddy Water Pokemon... Yeah, so it's 85% accurate, same base power as Surf, and 30% chance to lower the accuracy. So the accuracy drop is kind of nice, um, and I think that, yeah, it affects all adjacent foes. So this can be kind of nice in doubles, but as a singles move, I really wouldn't ever recommend running that. Um, Supercell Slam is another new move we'll talk about in a minute here. Electro Web, very few Pokemon actually get access to Electro Web. It's kind of nice that it's back. Um, I think like Reggie Eliki can make good use of it. I don't know if it already had access to it or, or if it just is now getting it, but that's more of like a doubles um, move again, kind of with that speed control, be able to use Electro Web and lowering their speed so that your Pokemon can hit them when they otherwise wouldn't in that same turn. Um, but in singles, it's not like the most uh, useful move in the planet. So Triple Axle is the, the, the really big one, in my opinion. Um, Triple Axle is an awesome move. I think it's very, very overpowered um, on a lot of Pokemon. And they went a little crazy with the amount of Pokemon that they gave it in Sword and Shield when they added it as a tutor move. Um, just There were so many Pokemon that ran away with this. Just getting that extra Ice type coverage and getting a really strong physical option is so good on a lot of Pokemon. I remember Pheromosa being an absolute nightmare um, in Sword and Shield competitive Pokemon just because it already has so much damage and then just having amazing coverage options just makes them such a big threat. Um, as far as like big Pokemon that get this, I think Meowskarada is going to be a huge one. Um, Meowskarada now gets access to the Triple Axle, and Meowskarada already had really good coverage. I mean, it already had a way to deal with Dragon types with Play Rough, but now actually be able to go Triple Axle is going to be so nice on it. And the thing about Triple Axle is it has that um, chance to like, like it hits like it's a multi-hitting move, right? It, it has a chance to miss, but be able to break through like Focus Sash is going to be huge. Is there a secondary effect outside of that? I'm trying to remember. Let's look it up really fast. Triple Axle Pokemon. Um, yeah, and it, it does raise in power. Oh, so it's only 90% accurate. So that's not great, but it is still a good coverage option. Um, so if you don't get that last hit in, you're really not doing as much damage. And I think that's good, actually. I think that kind of balances a little bit, because otherwise it'd be really, really overpowered. Um, does it have secondary effect? No, I think it's just that it's a multi-hitting move. So, oh, is Snatch in the game right now? I just kind of noticed that. I know we were talking about it a second ago. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go, but Triple Axle, it, it is, it's just going to be such a good coverage option, having that ice type coverage on um, a lot of Pokemon being super effective is going to be really, really good, um, I think it's going to be really good against like Dragonite too, which has been such a huge threat in the metagame right now, be able to break through that multi-scale with that weak hit, but then getting your more powerful consecutive hits after is going to feel so, so nice, um, there's definitely going to be a lot of Pokemon that are going to benefit from the Triple Axle. Um, coaching is more of a doubles move to boost your ally stats, um, so I'm going to kind of skip over that one here. Sludge Wave is so nice that's back as a TM. I think a lot of Pokemon that 
uh, benefit from that little extra damage um, based on the sludge bomb um, compared to the sludge bomb. Um, already had access to it, but maybe there's one or two Pokemon that now have access to it. And then also, being a TM, now it's going to give you like extra um, Pokemon, like as a good coverage option. So I think like Magmortar is probably going to be one that's going to get the, the Sludge Wave now. Um, and having that super effective damage against like the fairy types, fairy types have been very strong, and then also Terra Fairy has been one of the more dominant like defensive Terra types. It's just been so good to be like have that immunity against dragons and just have that, those good typing matchups. Um, it's just a really good typing in general defensively. So, we'll be able to hit them with that a little bit of extra damage is going to be super, super nice. Um, very, very strong move. It's nice to have a little bit of extra damage over the Sludge Bomb if you're not going for those the, the, like that poison status. So, um, Scorching Sands. Um, Scorching Sands is not as big, I think, in this generation. Um, I think it has a small chance to burn, but it's like a ba base 70 um, ground type move. Uh, it's special. Um, it's nice that it gives some special attackers that don't have access to ground type coverage, um, that new coverage. Um, but this is a lot bigger in sword, like Sword and Shield because when you went Dynamax or Gigantamax and you used a ground type move, that was going to um, give you a special defense boost. And that was one of the best effects. Like getting like the the, the Steel type um, Dynamax attack and like the the ground type attack, boosting those defenses is so, so was such a nice ability. And so it made Pokemon like extremely difficult to deal with, um, especially if they were trying to snowball right off the beginning of the, the match and just start getting all these stats with that extra health from Dynamax. Um, this was such a good move. I think now that it's going to be back to its normal base damage and you're dealing, you know, it, 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 everything just revolves around the typing with the terror types, but everything is going to be like, damage calculation is going to be back to normal. Um, it's not going to be as prevalent, but it could be a really nice coverage option. Ground types are cut, like tied with fighting type moves as like, like the typing that has the most super effective hits on other typings, uh, they're tied at five. Um, so just having that good coverage on some, some Pokemon is going to be really nice. Um, I think there's definitely going to be some good special attackers that are going to appreciate the uh, Scorching Sands as an option. Feather Dance is a really nice move, and I'm really excited to see this return because there's actually a lot of like good bulky flying type Pokemon that benefit from crippling the opposing Pokemon's attack stat. It just lowers their attack stat by two stages, so same thing as Charm. Um, I think like the original Bird Trio in the Gen 1 games really benefits from Feather Dance. Um, Zapdos and Moltres both really like to be physical walls with their secondary ability. Um, just trying to get those status effects on them. So be able to lower their attack and just kind of cripple physical attackers is going to be really, really nice. Um, I think there's definitely a few Pokemon that take advantage of the Feather Dance. So it's going to be fun to have back. Uh, Future Sight's a Pokemon that started got a lot more play in like more recent generations. Um, and it is nice just to be able to throw that down so that if you're doing a lot of switches in the battle or whatever, it forces that Pokemon to have to take that hit later on. That could be really, really good. Um, I think it's more prevalent in 6v6s just to kind of force certain switch matchups, but it definitely has its place. I think it's just like, like it's more critical in 3v3s to be mindful of like how you're using your move slots because you really have to have plans for all six of the Pokemon that they're going to be bringing. Um, and I'm not sure wasting a move slot on Future Sight, which is going to land like a couple turns later, um, is necessarily the best uh, use of your options when you might just want to, that direct damage to deal with them. But it is nice to see it make a return. Expanding Force is a really big one too. I'm sure a lot of doubles players are really going to appreciate this because Expanding Force is really easy to use when you have like a doubles Pokemon supporting you um, to get that extra damage. Um, so it, it is nice to see it make a return. Um, I don't think indeed he gets access to the expanding force anymore, but I could have that run, or maybe it does still. Um, if it does, it's, it, that's that's really good. I think it already had it though. It, I don't think it's going to be like a new move for it. So, but it is nice to see it make a return. Very very powerful if you can get the second train up on your on your side of the field. Uh, Skitter Smack. I always forget what this one does. Actually, one second. Let me look up Skitter Smack. Skitter Smack. Um, so base 70 power, it's a physical move, 90% accuracy, lowers the special attack. Okay, that, okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I think I remember, um, those are the Pokemon that learned by level up. Physical attackers. I think there are some Pokemon that could probably really appreciate this. The Milotic is actually be really cool, um, to kind of like deal with special attackers. Um... 
yeah, I could see that being viable. I could see that being pretty good. Um, I, I'm a big fan of like any kind of move in general that um, changes stat effects, whether it's boosting your own stat effect, like like Torch Time with Skeldurge, um, or Aqua Step with Quick Wavel, or just like lowering their their stats um, with like like moves like Mist Ball and Luster Purge with Latios and Latios. Um, it's really, really nice to see, and there's a lot, of, a lot of viability with it. It's really good if you want to use Assault Fest and still have some extra status. So I definitely think that that has a place. The 90% accuracy, it's not great, but it is good. Meteor Beam is a huge one. So Meteor Beam is such a strong move on special attackers. Uh, there's a few Pokemon now that are returning that are going to really appreciate this, and one of the new Pokemon also definitely appreciates this move so it's so nice to have it back as a tm just to get that massive damage and i'm fine uh, like tra trading off losing half my health for uh, like one move that's gonna like finish off a pokemon and just do a ton of damage is so worth it and it's actually really really nice in 3v3s a lot of times because then you can force death fodder like one of your own pokemon do some big damage and then come in with a clean pokemon if they're trying to set up on you it just keeps that momentum going for your team i'm actually such a huge fan of meteor beam um it's a really really good move i'm very very excited i actually been doing a little bit of testing too with some of the new pokemon uh, we're gonna talk about the, my impressions on them in a second video later on but um it's been putting in so much work for me i've won so many battles already just from using meteor meteor beam um, Throw Chop has already been in the game for a long time. I, I don't know. Are some of these already TMs? I feel like some like Breaking Swipe and Throw Chop are already in the game, but it is nice. I think it was more prevalent at the beginning of the Scarlet and Violet um, battle seasons when we had a more restricted decks because those sound based moves were just so strong. Skeleturge with the Torch on, Hyper Voice on um, Sylveon. Be able to stop those both ones going to be really nice. That's just a good physical dark type option, but I'm pretty sure it was already in the game. Breaking Swipes is not really a singles move in my opinion. We're going to kind of skip over that. Metal sounds kind of nice. It's going to be more for like taking down terror raids and stuff lower in their special defense, but maybe there's a Pokemon that appreciates metal sound. Um, I think a lot of people try to avoid using the, the moves that lower their stats because they can just switch out of it rather than boosting your own. But I think that there's actually some nice situations where that, that benefits you. And then doubles too, obviously. It's going to be really, really nice for like a support option as well. Um, Curse being back in as a TM is going to be awesome. It's such a good setup move for a lot of like physical attackers or just Pokemon that want to find that defense and uh, boost their damage output. And then also be able to go tear Ghost and Curse is going to be amazing. Um, we saw Whirlpool back as a trapping move, other trapping options. And be able to surprise Pokemon with a bulky Pokemon going tear Ghost and Curse is going to be great. So definitely happy to see that. Um, hard press another one of those new moves we'll talk about in a minute here same thing with dragon cheer um, are these all the new moves all right so let's hop in and talk about the new moves now so we got a lot of new moves and i'm actually very excited a lot of them are things that i have been wanting for a very very long time and so i don't think there are any one of these is overpowered or broken in any way i felt like a lot of the the dlc moves and like the tutor moves and sword and shield really made some pokemon like very very unhealthily broken and overpowered um and i don't really feel that way with this i think it's just like some good balance changes so let's go and talk about them here um electro shot is um i guess we'll skip the exclusives now well we can cover them we can cover them real quick so the electro shot is an exclusive to um archaladon and it is 130 base power charging move kind of like meteor beam um, where it boosts your special attack the first turn and then you actually do your damage the second turn But under rain, um, it's gonna charge and attack right away on um, that first turn. So super super good under rain um, It's already gonna be a really strong move. It can power up with like power herbs So you can get that plus one special attack and get that massive damage right off the bat I do appreciate that Archaladon actually doesn't get the stab You'd have to go tear electric just to get that stab damage, but it's still like a really good electric is just a good coverage option offensively um, it's going to be a really good move on it. I've already seen a lot of people run this with Rain, and it's been very, very powerful. Um, I am going to skip Terra Starstorm because that's a Tropicals exclusive. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, Fickle Beam is an exclusive to um, the the Applin Final Evolution line. I cannot think of his name right now, uh, but the, the Final Evolution for him. Um, and we're talking we're gonna do individual moveset guides on all the new Pokemon too So don't worry about that, but I do want to talk about the move this moves kind of insane So it's an 80 base power dragon type move So same thing as dragon pulse basically, but it's got a one in three chance to just double so it just has one in three chance to be 160 power base power move 
we've already seen on some Pokemon they get these like really really massive big power moves just be really really strong take a ton with its tiny little attack stat still had some really good usage with um, Gigaton Hammer having a Pokemon with an already really really high special attack is going to be amazing um, and it, this Pokemon just it's gonna be nuts. It's 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 gonna be really fun. I can't wait to talk a little bit more about it. But yeah, um, Burning Bulwark is um, another one of the um, exclusives to, for Gouging Fire. Um, why does it not say exclusive for? I guess maybe there's other Pokemon that get them. I don't know. I'll check. I don't think there is, but uh, maybe their pre evolutions get them too. Um, but Gouging Fire um, gets B Burning Bulwark, and it's basically like like. Um, Spiky Shield or uh, King's Shield or any one of those moves that has an additional effect on top of protecting. Um, and it's going to affect physical attackers, only it leaves them with a burn if they try to hit you with contact move. And that is incredible. So being able to just soak in, um, I mean, burn affects like the physical attacker, so it makes sense that you'd want to use it on a contact move. And it just has a lot of really good synergy in that front. And just being able to passively get a burn on a physical attacker if they come in and if you had a bad matchup is going to be so, so nice. I actually think that Gouging Fire is going to be better as like a Dragon Dance Sweeper, but I've already seen a lot of people trying to use the Burning Bulwark. It's going to be really, really nice um, to see it on like a defensive set, and it's just, it's really, really strong. So better than um, having to like rely on the 85% accuracy for Will-O-Wisp, just be able to guaranteed get that burn if you can soak in that physical attack is going to be so, so nice. Um, Thunderclap is another exclusive here for Raging Bolt. It's basically special su Sucker Punch, um, and it's an electric type move. So really, really good when it has a special attack. We'll talk more about him too later. Uh, Mighty Cleave, uh, exclusive for Iron Boulder. It's a 95 base power rock type move with 100% accuracy. So this reminds me a lot of like rock type Ivy Cudgel um, on the Cornerstone Mask um, Ogre Pond. Um, only Ogre Pond has a little bit more damage, and it's going to that move's gonna do a little bit more damage and also have that high critical ratio. But the really nice thing about this is this breaks through protect, which in singles we're like, eh, why would we care about that? But I've been using um, Iron Boulder quite a bit on Burning Bulwark and just bre breaking through that move um, feels so, so good. It doesn't burn you either. It just breaks through and I'm able to one hit KO them really easily. So um, really, really nice to have that. And it's just, Rock type is such a good physically offensive coverage option in the first place. The problem is it's just always had bad accuracy. Um, so if you want Stone Edge with that 100 base power, um, damage then you're sacrificing it with a move that's going to miss like one fifth of the time right and that's not very good it's so un inconsistent but just having that consistency with a really strong rock type physical option is so so nice so this has been very very strong tachyon cutter has been another really good one um exclusive to iron crown it's basically special dragon darts and it's a steel type move so um i really like this um, if you go Terra Steel, you're boosting damage on that. You can break through Pokemon that have Focus Sash if you're doing enough damage. It's just a super, super powerful move. And the other nice thing is it actually doesn't miss either. It has perfect accuracy. So if they're trying to set up Evasion, I, I know Evasion's not really prevalent right now. It's not really viable, but it's, it's just one more option to deal with Evasion. So this is just another one of the reasons too, side tangent, but this is another one of the reasons why I get so frustrated with like the Smogon players that are like, oh, Evasion's so broken. It's so unfair. I mean, there's literally so many options. They give you so many options, even when it's not viable and people aren't running it right now um, to deal with evasion. We've just got another really good option, but um, that's my, my side tangent. It's going to be a really good move. Um, really, really fun to use here. Um, now getting into the, the new TMs that a lot of Pokemon can use here. Um, so hard press is a really interesting move. Um, I don't know... I think it has like a max base damage of 140, so how it works is it does more damage based on how much hit points your opponent has left. If they have full hit points, I think it does a full 140 damage if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's going to be a steel type move. We've already seen moves like this with like like right now, um, but they have, they've all been normal type moves and so actually having a move that you can have super effective hits on. Um, I think Pokemon are going to appreciate it as like a good stab option, as a, like, as like a physical attacker. Um, I think in 3v3 too, especially where you're going to pretty much be dealing with Pokemon at full health, or you're going to have other ways to whittle them down and deal with it, it's going to be very viable. I think Metagross is really going to appreciate the, the hard press. It's going to be a really good high damaging option with more accuracy than something like a Meteor Mash. So 
Um, I don't know how competitively viable this is actually going to be. It's going to be really interesting to see how people are running it, but I am happy that they, they gave it another chance to give us another really good physical um, seal type option. So. Dragon Chew is going to be a doubles move, um, boost critical hit uh, ratio of your ally, and if they're dragon, it's going to raise it even more. So I can see this being really good with like Keendra if you want to do something fun with that, like maybe a sniper set, give it like the Razor Claw and Sniper and do, do some fun stuff, but not really a singles move here. Now, Luring Voice is going to be a really interesting one. Um, I'm pretty sure it sound, it's like a sound-based move that I can hit through Substitute. Um, Substitute hasn't really been quite as prevalent as it was in the earlier battle seasons of Scarlet and Violet, but I always like sound-based moves just for that, um, just because it's really annoying to deal with Pokemon with Substitute, and like, and Spothra is still a huge threat, especially now that we have Key and Moringa Berries, it just makes it so much easier to set up, and it can hide behind that um, Substitute just to get up at speed boost. We have Blaziken now, that's going to want to be getting a lot of speed boosts up, and then Baton passing that into allies, I've seen like a ton of people running Blaziken as a Baton Pass partner. Um, so being able to hit through that's going to be really, really nice. Um, and it's a base, base 80 um, fairy type move that if they raise their um, stats at all this turn, um, then it's going to confuse the target. So that's going to be really, really cool. Uh, basically, think of it as like Dazzling Gleam with a secondary effect that some Pokemon are going to get access to. Um, I really like this. It's going to be a nice way to have like a decent damaging move and punish Pokemon for setting up because now they have to play with this gamble of okay, I can try to attack, but now I'm confused and I have a 30% chance to do damage to myself. Um, so it's kind of this trade-off. It's another anti-setup option um, that gives the player some choice. It's kind of like, like a nice little like medium um, move that I really, really like. So um, Tempered Flare, I think actually was introduced in some other Pokemon games. We haven't really seen this being used a whole lot. It's a base 75 physical um, fire type move. Um, that's some Pokemon I'm going to get, and then the power doubles if um, your move before failed. Now, I see this actually being viable with another move. Um, we'll jump down to it. Upper Hand. We'll talk about this next. Upper Hand is, um, acts as a priority move against other priority moves. So, if they're going to use Bullet Punch or Extreme Speed or um, like, like Sucker Punch or something like that, it's going to go before those moves and then force opponents to flinch. It's also a base 65 physical move, and I love this. I love the concept of this. I think it's going to be pretty tricky to use, but priority has been getting kind of out of hand. And I think that, like, as a higher skilled base player, I mean, I know we have things like Psychic Terrain and some abilities to prevent um, effectiveness against the against the priority moves, but in general, priori priority moves are so, so powerful. It's really annoying having to deal with them, and just having one more option to kind of deal with them right now, especially when we have so many strong priority threats in the Scarlet and Violet metagame, is going to be amazing. So, I can see this being kind of cool if you're anticipating, um, especially since they're both physical moves, anticipating the priority move doesn't work out and that move fails, at least then you can hit him with a Tempered Flare and get that double damage, so you're kind of making up for, for missing. Um, with a higher base power physical uh, fire type move, so maybe those moves are going to have some viability. I, I haven't actually looked at like all the Pokemon that get access to both and are going to be physical attackers, um, but I could see those maybe synergizing pretty well together. But very very happy about Upper Hand. I think this is something we have needed for a really really long time. I've wanted like a really good like counter option, like a move option to priority outside of just Quick Guard because Quick Guard in singles is not really practical. Um, to use a lot of times, you can, but it's very, very niche. Um, I think this is going to have a lot more viability. Um, and it's pretty easy to tell. I mean, if you're up against Scizor, if you're up against Dragonite, they're going to go for E-Speed or something like that. You know, It's pretty easy to tell when you're going to go for that upper hand. So I, I'm very, very happy that they added this in. I can see some people being very, very upset about this, but you're taking a huge gamble, taking up one move slot on one of your Pokemon just to try to predict when they're going to go for a priority move. So I like it. I think it's balanced, and it's only base 65 power. Um, I think that that's that's perfect, honestly. I think they nailed it right there. I think that's very, very, very good damage um, for for a move like that. So now Supercell Slam. I am very, very excited about this one too. Um, it's a physical electric type attack, and it's basically high jump kick, 100 base power high jump kick for electric type attackers. Now. A lot of people are like, oh, this isn't going to be that great, and yes, true, it's annoying that like if you use it against a ground-type Pokemon, um, they're just going to have an immunity and you're going to do half your damage to, your to yourself, 
but you already had that with moves like High Jump Kick, and I used to use High Jump Kick when not as many Pokemon got access to the close combat, and that was their highest base power move, and I could still sweep easily and just like crush a lot of teams with it. We saw uh, Blaze is going to be a huge threat with this to the point where like the Smogon players banned it up to Ubers because they thought it was too powerful. Um, and uh, Halucha, I, I used to sweep with Halucha back in Gen 6. Um, a ton in singles um, before I got access to close combat and that Pokemon was absolutely incredible um, so I think that there's gonna be a lot of physical attackers that have wanted a strong physical attacking stab option for the longest time and they're gonna make really really good use of this we have Electrovire and Luxray in the game right now um, these are Pokemon that have wanted stronger options outside just wild charge um, and yes, the, the immunity to the ground thing is kind of annoying. You're taking a gamble, you have to choose. But I think that that's going to find the damage output that you need to find the one it KOs with some boosts um, that you otherwise wouldn't find. I think that Luxray with like a Flame Orb Guts boost is actually going to find the damage it needs to KO Pokemon. I think that Electrovire with like a bulk up um, and maybe like Trail Blaze to get some speed is going to do enough damage with a Supercell Slam to find a one it KO that it just would not find with a Wild Slam um, or the Wild Charge sorry um and then the other nice thing about it too is you have a physical option electric option that's going to be viable that you're not taking uh recoil damage from consistently if you can land it and predict it at a good time it's not just going to take you out so that gives you more viability with pokemon with focus ash too if you're trying to set up you know you might have a good setup move and then try to use that as a good coverage option and you can actually run it without knocking yourself out as long as you can land the hit so i like it Still, I think Electro Pokemon could benefit from another physical option, but for now, I will take it. And I'm so glad to see them finally actually have a more viable option than just having to rely on the Wild Charge. And then Psychic Noise, not, last but not least, it's a really cool uh, move. It's a Psychic-type move. I also hope it's a sound-based move that breaks through Substitute for the same reason as Alluring Voice. But it prevents healing for the next two turns, and that includes everything from move effects, um, items, terrain effects, so grassy terrain's not going to heal you, leftovers, recover, things like that, leech seed, um, it prevents healing, um, and that's going to be so, so nice, I'm very, very excited about this, I've already been using this a little bit too, um, and while base 75 days damage is not that much, um, I always wanted to use like heal block but i never thought it lasted long enough in the battle to make it viable but heal block in concept it was a move that like did the same effect as this but it was just a status move um you could shut down some pokemon that just relied on their healing as a crutch especially when we didn't have like the limited power points for healing moves down to 8 pp which i think was another really really good change in scarlet and violet um so having an option just to kind of shut them down and go nope you can't heal up right now and then i can slowly start working on taking you down it's going to kind of put a timer on some of these pokemon that snowball and get out of hand with their healing options and i really really like that um it's it's not too overpowered so you're kind of taking that gamble do you want to do psychic or psy shock with a little bit more damage or do you want to run this option and prevent their healing and have like a little bit more um just tack on your team so um just a lot of really fun moves i'm really really excited with the changes that they made i think this is a great addition i think this is a good variety um this is definitely what i would want to see out of new moves like for dlc pack so i'm very satisfied this makes me very very happy it's gonna be really fun using these on already existing pokemon in the scarlet and violet metagame that are now just gonna get a little bit of a buff it's gonna be really fun trying these out on the new returning pokemon um, it's going to be nice having some counters just to kind of change the game up a little bit. So very, very excited. Let me know what moves you're most excited for or want to try out. And without any further ado, this is Gaming Cool Gamer out.